Having the right coaches is the most underutilized thing that's out there. Oh my God. People will come to, don't get me wrong, will come to events like this and get motivated by someone. But you need that direct contact with someone. Yes. Hey everybody, I'm Eric Obremt and you're listening to Be Authentic or Get the Fuck Out. We talk about real shit, what's on our minds, and don't give a fuck if it makes you feel a little uncomfortable. So sit back, strap in, and get ready for some real shit. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Be Authentic or Get the Fuck Out. I'm your host, Eric Obremt. Thank you for tuning in today. Uh, We're back here at D2D Con 7 with another interview, and uh, this is one that I actually didn't plan on getting. Um, I'm extremely excited to learn something from this man. Um, I got to see him speak at Closer School Live about six months ago, I think it was, something like that, and... uh, it was, it was just, it was, I don't listen to speakers that much anymore. I just get kind of fucking zoned out and I move on. Um, it has to be like really grabbing and, and engaging and entertaining for me to, to actually sit there and listen to a speaker. And when, when Brian spoke, I, I was just like, I was all in and I was listening and I, I really appreciated that. So I'm really excited for this conversation today. And I really hope that not only I learned something, well, I hope you guys do too, but like, I kind of don't care. Like I just want to learn some shit today. So um, I introduced my guest today. It's Brian Galky, right? Galky. Galky. Woman holding Fuck. Key. Okay. I screwed that up. I well, hate it when I screw that up. You're not alone. Everybody's Galk Glick. And if okay. you listen to Steve Sims, he calls me Brian Galk. So no oh, really? Knows. Yeah. Okay. At least I threw the E on there, right? Yeah, exactly. yeah. I mean, try and say my name. Oh, no, I'm not. Okay. Even. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody gets mine right. So, yeah. Brian, thanks for coming, man. Oh, yeah. I really appreciate it. When I was talking with Steven, and I was like, dude, like, come up with some ideas. Like, because I like to pre book, yeah. you know, before we get here, because I don't want to walk up and down and you get a bunch of schmucks that are like, can I be on your fucking show? And it's yes. like, no, you can't. And and he was like, dude, you should get, you should get Brian. And I was like, wait, who's Brian? And I lo- I'm like, oh, yes, that guy. Like, I 100% want to talk to that guy. Right. Um, tell everybody what it is that you speak about. We'll get into all the other shit sure. later, but yeah. I was trained by attorneys on how how to understand other people based on their facial features. Okay. And it's been around since the Greeks. Uh, it was back to Aristotle. Then it was actually part of the academic system until Henry VIII said, I don't think I like the idea that beggars and vagabonds can use this skill against a common man. Yeah, sorry. Catch That's it. That's all right. All right, yeah. better. And yeah, like it fucking it's leaving spins. Me. I know. I'll, it pisses me like off. This. Yeah, I do that too a little bit. Like I hold yeah. the top. Yeah. Um, so it was part of the academic system until Henry VIII had it pulled out. And then they tried to bring it back during the Renaissance age. Someone named Lavatier taught it. And what happened is phrenology is bumps on the head determine your personality. Like, oh, you got this bump here, you're a criminal. So when they got rid of phrenology, they got rid of face reading at the same time. Mm. So I call it decoding facial features. It's really face reading. But as soon as I say face reading, people are like, ooh, can you read palms too? And I'm like, no, I can't. <laughs> so that's why I call it decoding facial features. Interesting. And, and how did you, what got you into that then? Fluke circumstance. I had a friend who came into town. She said, let's go to dinner. She canceled the dinner and I was like, okay, well, I'm gonna stay here. She said, no, you need to come meet this guy that's at the trade show. I'm like, why do I need to come meet him? She said, he reads faces. I'm like, no, I'm not going. And then she finally convinced me, but I went with an agenda and that was, I was gonna prove that this guy was full of crap. Yeah. And so I don't know if I can say a crap or shit, but uh, here yeah, and be authentic or get the I, fuck out. Good. Yeah. You can say whatever you want. You can right. tell a rape joke if you'd like to. I'll I don't say that one for later. You can. I'm just telling you anything is on the table. Right. So I was like, yeah. fuck this guy. He ruined my plans. I'm going to go and show that this guy's a fraud. Yeah. And so I went with that agenda. I was like, I've heard of Barnum statements, which is, oh, you've had a hard time in life. Oh, you know, somebody whose name starts with him. So I went in locked and loaded. I was going to bust this guy. <laughs> And I went and met him. He just, he glowed this nice, like friendly smile, but I still was like, no, I'm going to get this guy. Yeah. And we sat down to dinner and he started dissecting everyone to a T, including me. Yeah. I was like, whoa, what is this? So I bought the book and then I drive from Dallas to Fort Worth, which is a 45 minute drive twice a month to do group coaching with him. And I started making some of my friends go too, because I wanted other people's input on it. And I started testing it. And at the time I just moved off help desk and I was a sales engineer and some other positions. But what I found was when we went to go do presentations, you could always look at your projector, your PowerPoint, your product, but people were always the unknown. Mm. This was the first proactive skill that I ever could pick up. And so my journey started early on. I was an introvert by nature, but I like to be around people and people confuse that and think you're an extrovert. Mm. But I was in the prison of my own mind most times when I was out in public. And there's still times today that I do that. I, I revert back to that introvert. So I'm out, but I'm in prison. And so I picked up books on body language, how to win friends and influence people. And I used all those skills, but those are reactive skills. They're still valuable, 
but you got to be in the room. And there's a lot of connotations that people don't understand. So for example, oh, cross legs, maybe it's just more comfortable. So you just have to learn those skills. But with this, I could go and look up people on LinkedIn ahead of time oh. and start figuring out how do I speak their language? Did you do that to me? No, I did not. But I sat across from you <laughs> last year, so I already could tell. So if we use yours up here, yeah. larger ears versus eyes. So auditory first, well, you also have a podcast. So I would say things like, hey, does this sound like a good idea? Do you hear where I'm coming from? Right. So that's attempting to speak your language versus I'm visual. So I would say things like, oh, picture this, come look at this. Like I'm horrible, but I send people memes and pictures because I'm visual you know, versus mm. telling someone a joke. So you can look at someone's face and figure out like your eyebrows are close to your eyes. So you make decisions fast. So the longer I talk, the more I bore you. So if I have 30 minutes on your Oh calendar, my God, that's fucking real. Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> Dead serious. And so you just start looking at people and like if people can see your picture here. So you have a Cupid's bow, which is the subconscious sign says, listen to me when I talk. But you also have a flatter upper lip. So I know don't ask you a lot of personal questions, but I sit and wait. And when you start sharing personal information, then it's game on. But if I ask too much too fast, you'll put up that wall. Mm. Yeah. Wow. That's really interesting. Mm -hmm. That, uh, that it, it's funny. I, cause I actually, I remember, I remember after I listened to you speak mm -hmm. at closer school, I was super engaged and really interested. And then I remember I went back, I went back to my coach mm -hmm. and I, and I was talking to him about it and he's a, Fuck, I don't even know what to call him. He's a, uh, he's, he's big into um, neurology, hypnotherapy, mm -hmm. um, so different nuances and modalities, you know, with that. Like I spent three days in Mexico with him and he like literally hypnotized me like for half the day and like was inserting things into my fucking oh, brain yeah. and like all kinds of crazy shit. And I brought this up and, and he was very, I, I was expecting him to be very all in mm -hmm. on it. And he was very 50 50. Yes. Do you get a lot of that? I get most people think it's complete bullshit. <laughs> okay. I definitely don't think it's bullshit. <laughs> because you saw me talk. But if you just right. heard, oh, this guy can read faces, or oh, he decodes facial features, people go, uh, no. And I thought, when I first met the guy, I thought there's no way. So when I bought the books and I started studying, I was still trying to prove him wrong. Because why can you go to the bookstore and there's tons of books on body language, but there's not many books on this? But yet it's taught to attorneys at some institutions for jury consulting. Oh, sure. Of course it is. Yeah. And the crazy part is when you start reading about it, authors and artists used to take courses in what's known as physiognomy. That's what this is based on. And it's not a science. It's a pseudoscience because it's not 100%. But authors and artists would take courses in it to learn how to do character development for their books or for their drawings. Mm. So that's why. Why do all witches look the same? Why do all devils? They all have angled eyebrows. Why do all down, witches look the same? Yeah. Like pointed chin downturn nose yeah. angled features so every disney movie you turn on do you know who the villain is and who the heroes oh yeah looking? right of course we've been trained our whole lives how to understand people based on their faces yeah we just didn't and the rich it. guy's always a villain too yes <laughs> and he always has a big nose it looks like a money bag yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. wow i i, I want to dig in a little bit to I, I loved what you said about the um the, that you're the introvert mm -hmm. um because that's something that i have I really dug into a lot about myself because I, I and again, I have, I have a history of drug addiction, alcohol addiction. Um, I'm sober now, but like I had a big isolation phase and like, I always felt alone. Uh -huh. Um, I could be in a room with a thousand people and still feel like I was completely fucking alone in that room. Yep. Horrible, but I can stand on a stage and I'll speak to 10,000 people which I haven't got to do that yet, but that's my goal. Um, I, you know, but like I've, I, the largest stage I've spoken in front of was at RoofCon. I had 4,000 people, right. Wow, that, that I, that I spoke to. Right. Yeah. And I didn't have like, I wasn't nervous, worried, anything like I loved that. Like I got energy from that. Right. Yes. But now you walk me out into the group of those 4,000 people fuck mm -hmm. don't love that right put me in a one-on-one -on -one conversation with people i'm an open book love having those conversations yes i can do five ten of these a day whatever i can go speak mm -hmm. but then i have to go hide in my room for 30 minutes to like decompress and breathe and like bring it all back so that i can go back out and talk to people here's what's interesting the more speakers you meet the more that are like that oh so really you take uh, how about do you ever watch steve sims stuff no. Okay, so follow Steve Sims. Okay. He was my speaking coach at first. Um, well, I say he's still my coach. Uh, 
when I first started speaking, I wanted to be like him. But what I quickly realized is he has his earphones in before he goes on stage. He's pacing back and forth, listening to Pearl Jam. Yeah. And when he gets off stage, he goes and hides. Yeah. And then he comes out. So what, what uh, Joe Polish said is a lot of people who want to be speakers are somewhat broken because they want to be seen, but they want to share and help other people. Oh, wow. That couldn't be more fucking true. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so when you said you get up on stage, like, it's funny. I'm just like you in that when I first go to places, like, I got here uh, for the VIP dinner on Thursday night. Mm-hmm. And I'm kind of like hoping somebody recognizes me because I don't know who to talk to. And right. so it is a nice thing. That's why you always see me in a vest because people find me. They're like, oh, you're the face guy. Mm. But it helps me because when I first walk in, I'm just as nervous as anybody else. And people think because you're on stage that you're comfortable being on stage. You're on stage for a purpose. Right. And now, there are people who are up there to say, look at me. Yes. But they're the people you can tell what that's about versus I want to help people. And by helping others, we push ourselves to do more. There's an entire book, Man's Search for Ve- uh, Meaning by Viktor Frankl. Yeah. In the first half of the book, it's what he went through in living in a concentration camp. Yep. The second half is the study he learned. And the, the high level is when you try and do things for other people, you can accomplish more than if you're just doing things for yourself. Yes, 100%. In my keynote that I do, like... He is one of my slides with one of my quotes. Yes. Is giving meaning because I, I teach and I talk about um, creating a cult like culture inside of your company right. by utilizing what I coined, well, me and my co- coach coined as the team method. Mm-hmm. And why I say my coach is because I had all these things. Mm-hmm. My brain doesn't work in a way to organize them correctly. Right. And he was, and I had three things, right? I had trust authenticity and empathy. And I was like, these are the things that like, I like to talk about. And like, this is what I want to put in my keynote and blah, blah, blah. And he's like, can you come up with a fourth? And I'm like, oh, fuck, I don't know. And, and he was like, well, what about uh, meaning? Do you think meaning's important? I'm like, oh my God, yes. Like, yes. yes, we need to put meaning in there. And he's like, do you know why else we need to put meaning in there? And I'm like, no, why? And he's like, cause then it's the team method. And I'm yes. like, God damn it. I'm like, <laughs> having the right coaches is the most underutilized thing that's out there. Oh my God. People will come to, don't get me wrong, we'll come to events like this and get motivated by someone, but you need that direct contact with someone. Yes. So that's one thing that when I was a corporate employee, I was a corporate employee for 21 and a half years, I would say, oh, I'm gonna go to a seminar on the weekend. People go, why, are you gonna get a raise at work? <laughs> no, I, I wanna be a better person. Right. But I never pulled the trigger on coaching because I didn't see how it would help me long-term mm. being an employee. And that was a mistake. Yeah. I wish I had hired coaches earlier on, but I thought you had to be an entrepreneur to have a coach, not have a coach to be a better person. Do you think it's because as an employee, you feel like your leader is supposed to be your coach? Oh, yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, you think what's really broken with the system is... Or why should I pay for it? Yes. That's exactly <laughs> yeah, what I was yeah, going to say. Yeah. I. So I went to a, a sales leader that I worked for one time and I said, well, here's some courses and I think we should sign up for it. And his answer was... I think by the time I hire people, they should already be trained. And I, oh, I'm like, wow. oh, okay. <laughs> training is supposed to be ongoing. That's why it's called training, not trained, right? Trained, yeah. <laughs> but that was his answer. So he did, they didn't want to, when we had sales meetings, we would do product presentations, but nobody to teach us anything new for a lot of years. Oh. And to me, so I would do it on my own. So I was the nerd that I would take vacation and sometimes I'd uh, vacation time. Sometimes I'd literally go on vacation, but majority of times I was at events like this to learn. I am the nerdy note taker. Like you were talking about earlier. I I can't pay attention to speakers unless I'm taking notes at the same time. Mm. So I've got dozens and dozens of notes and notebooks and everything because that's how I paid attention. But interesting. So, okay. And I'm the opposite of that Mm -hmm. because if I take notes, I'm not listening. I feel like, and I'm missing something. So that's why I take notes. Why? Because I'm seeing what I'm hearing. Yeah. Because you said yesterday that you're going to rewrite a book. Yeah. Basically, just because of like to put it into your not perspective, but my cheat. I wanted to have a like a on the go version of it. Yeah. And so we were talking about Chris Voss. Yes. I, hit, I read his book and uh, whenever it came out, and uh, I showed you the picture. I crashed an event in 2019 because I was still an employee. And I found out he was speaking in Dallas. I tried to get the company to pay for it. They wouldn't. So when I found out where he was, and it was at a private uh, hotel. And I'm like, Oh yeah, I'm here for the event. They didn't have a name to check. And I went and sat in the hallway until they broke for lunch and a bathroom break. I snuck in, said, Hey Chris, we signed my book. And he signed it. I said, can I get a picture too? He's like, yeah. He's like, I, I didn't see you in here. And I'm like, I'm not in the class. And I took off. 
No shit. Yeah. Have you told him that story? Son? I showed him the picture uh, when we were backstage yesterday in the green room. Yeah. So, yeah. I went back there. I found out that he was here. And uh, so I went to the green room and talked to him and he was the nicest guy. Really? Yeah. We talked for 20 minutes. He didn't make it all about him. He gave me some philosophies and he was talking about, you need to study more than just his book that yeah. he gave other authors. It was such an, an enjoyable experience that Oh, I'll tell you, I'm going to do a post and the first tagline that's going to be kind of like clickbaity is they always tell you not to meet people you admire. And I'm going to say that's the opposite of meeting Chris because it was really an enjoyable experience. Isn't that interesting when you do, I, I've, I've learned this now that just that, that I've been able to get in different areas and different groups and, you know, on stages and just do different things. And you, so you meet these people that you thought were out of your reach, you know, at one time and the people that are the most enjoyable to be around are obviously, and this is an obvious statement, but the ones that like when they actually sit there and talk to you and ask you questions about you. Right. Right. But it's so crazy that once you start to see that mm -hmm. and realize it, and then you get around the ones that do the opposite. Yes. And how gross it feels. <laughs> Have you noticed that? Oh my God. Yes. Holy shit. Is It's like, I mean, it's like insect repellent. You know what I mean? You're like, yes. fucking go away. There's people that by being in a green room or being around them off stage, you go, don't want to be like that person. Yes. And there's, unfortunately, there's more than those in some different venues than there are in others. And that's what I'll look at sometimes. If I'm going to spend money or if I'm going to speak at something, I look at who are the other speakers yeah. or who is going to be on stage. Because even like if I go and speak at something, there's some people who come in, they speak and then they get, they hightail it out. They're there for the one event. I'm here to learn. So I'm like, okay, how many days is it? Who's speaking? When do I need to arrive? Right. When, because this, like being on your podcast, well, I spoke this morning. I could have hightailed it out of here after my right. 1030 talk, but that wasn't it. I want to be around other people. I want to continue learning. Love that. Yeah. I love that. So do you, I, you said you have a booth here. Correct. Right. So do you, I ask this just out of selfish reasons, because I'm learning how to navigate this world a yes. little bit better too. Um, I've got friends that will go speak and get paid to speak mm -hmm. and then other ones that go speak so that they can kind of soft pitch what they're doing in the background right. right so then they can make their money off of that right Correct. are you one or the other or both it's a combination is so it you, and what do you like better would be the last part of that question it's going to sound cheesy when i say it i want to know what's going to help the audience the best sure so the difference between me like people go oh are you a motivational speaker no no i'm a tactical speaker because what i teach you can walk out of the room and immediately use there you go um it's nice to be paid to speak because they usually pay for your airfare your hotel and you get to leave people better than you found them if it's the right of it i'll pay to speak right why because it gets you in front of the right audience but then you have to make your money up another way I suck at CTAs or call to action for anybody who does. I do is. too. I'm fucking horrible <laughs> yeah. at it. I will rush through that slide. I'll spend like two minutes on every other slide. And I'm like, and I offer these services. Thanks. Bye. Because I'm not used to that. For me, it's the skill that can help people yeah. is what I love. I would like to make more money doing it, but I rush past the CTA. So my, so I brought this up with my coach, right? This is yeah. just kind of fun going back and oh, forth yeah. with this kind of shit. Right. But I was talking to my coach about it and I was like, I don't like, I don't like doing that either. Right. Like I don't like asking for a sale right? on, and he was like, no, he goes, here's, here's what you, here's what I'm going to have you do. He goes, when you start the thing, mm -hmm. you tell them, I'm not here to pitch you unlike everybody else that might be here, I have no desire to pitch anything to you because by the end of this whole thing, you're going to be running out to me wanting to work with me and I'm going to have to figure out if I have space. I like that. And he's like, and that's it. And then do your speech. Yeah. I was like, fuck, that's, I can do that. Yes. Oh, I need to start doing that because I get to the end, like I said, I'm like, Okay, and yes, you can buy me stuff, and I have it, and thank you, bye. Yeah, no, I, I, I love that. And so now I'm just waiting for the next stage to be able to do it, right? Because right. I just haven't had the right one yet, you yeah. know what I mean, to be able to do it. But I was like, that's genius, because then I don't have to close with it. Right. But I already told them, you're already going to buy from me, because by the end of this, you're going to be so fucking overwhelmed that why wouldn't you want to work and with me? you're planting the seed early on, and yes. you have to believe it. The uh, Yes, and I, yeah, and I do. That's what I mean. The rushing through the slides... Um, so one of the guys that Steve knows, the best quote I've ever heard is, only imposters don't have imposter syndrome. Ah. And I don't know, I can't, I don't know who to give credit for it, but I reference that all the time because we all feel like imposters, like, why am I doing this? Should I get paid for it? Right. It's a weird thing. But there's people who are like, no, I deserve it. And they're the ones who are usually the imposters. Yeah. So when we struggle with it, it's because we want to give more value to people than we all want to get paid. But it's I want to give the value and it feels kind of dirty at times when yes. I know I can help someone 
to ask for money for it at the same time. The other thing for me is I have the feeling of what if they, if they don't do what we talked about and then they're unhappy with results, then I feel like I didn't do what I was supposed to do because I wasn't able to hold their hand through the entire. Yes. So that's good because some people are just like, hey, whatever it does to get the product out there, and that's upon them. Right. Um, a guy a guy that's here, and I think he spoke also, he stopped by my booth. He's like, man, you know what? I know we talked last year, and I want to work with you. Will, will you coach me and everything? I'm like, sure, why not? And he's like, well, well where do we start? And I said, well, did you watch the course? He's like, what? I said, you, you bought the course when you are here last year. He's like, oh, shit, I forgot. And so I could have not said that and been like, well, you need to buy the course, but I knew he bought it. I'm like, well, let's start there and then we'll pick up the coaching from that part. And he's, he completely forgot he bought the course a year ago. That's hilarious. Okay. So you do have a course, like an online course. Yep. Okay. So that's how we know Brad. Yep. Um, so I started when I was an employee, I knew I wanted to do more and I, I joined Brad Lee's Closer School Live yep. uh, this year, this April will be five years ago. Okay. And what do you mean joined it? Like joined uh, so the group? He, he's got a training class on Tuesdays. Yeah. And when I joined it. I coached on it. Yes. That's okay. That's the other place we know each other from. Okay. Because I went out to do the interview with him and then we were literally sitting there. I, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. This oh, is no, just I a funny this. story because yeah. I was sitting there and we did the interview and we got done and we went and ate lunch real quick. Yeah. And we were coming back and he goes, uh, what, what are you doing at four o'clock? I'm like, dude, I fucking flew out here <laughs> to hang, out, to with hang out with you. Like I'm not doing anything at four. And he was like, Oh, I got this, uh, I got this, uh, closer school, uh, you know, uh, group that, w- that I coach at four o'clock. He's like, you want to do it? And I was like, what the fuck do you want me to coach on? And he's yeah. like, I don't know, figure it out. Don't you know how to figure shit out? And I was like, yeah, okay. And so, <laughs> so I did. Yeah. And I sat down and yeah, and did it. And then he called me three weeks later for his other one. Uh-huh. And he was like, you want to do that one? Crash house. Uh, it was the sales one. Yeah. Is that what it's called? Yeah, there's, there's a crash okay. house. There's, so the, it's got another room or something, but yes. Okay, but it was a sales one. I'm like, well, I don't really teach sales. Like I teach culture stuff and whatever. And he's like, well, can you figure it out or not? And I was like, yeah, okay. So I took all of my culture stuff and then I just said, well, wait a minute, you can do the exact same thing with clients and just sell them the same way that I sell my employees. I'm like, yes. so that's what I'll teach and did and went really well. It was just fun and I really enjoyed it. And it was why I started my group coaching calls now yes. was all because of that experience. So I'm going to fanboy again for a minute. Um, I saw him speak at 10X and I'm like, he was my favorite speaker. Mm-hmm. And then I found out he was creating this course. I'm like, I want to join the course. But the thing about it is I learned so much from him and he brings in other guests. So he said, and he'll say openly, if this guy resonates with you more than I do, go follow that guy. Yes. And one time I sent him some notes. I'm like, hey, look, I really enjoyed this about your course. Here's the notes I took if you want to use it. And he called me and I was like, somebody from Vegas called me and they right. left me a voicemail. Hey, this is Bradley. I'm like, what? Like, yeah. And so going back to what we were talking about earlier, when we're raised in a corporation, we're taught you don't go above your level to talk to people. Right. In this world that we're in with this, you talk to whoever you can benefit or can benefit you. And what I mean is there's no gatekeepers. Like if you want to go talk to Sam at the event, you talk to Sam. Right. If you want to go talk to the CEO or the president or whoever, you have to go through layers and gatekeepers and everything else. But in this world that we're in, like you and I are having the conversation because you put it out there and I responded. Yeah. And you allowed me to come on your podcast. Yeah. It wasn't, let me, my people talk to your people. That's the difference between being a corporate employee and being an entrepreneur or in this space. Man, that's really real. Yeah. That's awesome. And, and, I, and I'll be completely ignorant to the fact, like I'll be self-admitted that I'm stupid. Um, like I didn't know that you had a course, right? Yeah. So like, I mean, like when we get done, I'm gonna buy the fucking course. Like, cause I love, I love what you do. And like, I love to learn, I love to learn more. Um, and, I, and I love to learn, what, I, what I've learned now as I got older is that I like to learn just so that I can teach it to my people. Oh, absolutely. Right. But before it used to be just very self-serving of, Hey, I can go in and now I can do this and I can close this or I can whatever. Right. Yeah. But now it's like, Ooh, but if I get that skill set, then I can sit down and I can teach it to these guys. So I'm going to show you something funny. I can see it on your hat, but for the people who see, see how you have angled eyebrows. So angled eyebrow people are, what's my angle? Help me understand it. So then I can help others. And I didn't begin to get this angled eyebrow until I became a corporate trainer. Why? I had to learn the material to then teach it to someone else. So we see angled Mm. eyebrows and we think, oh, that's bad. It's not. It's just how people think and process information. So if you see an angled eyebrow, you need to help them understand it first. Then they can help others. Wow. Yeah, that's very real. And uh, so you had, I walked by earlier and you were interviewing Luke. 
Well, Luke is yeah. somebody that I follow because I'm fascinated by his training. He's invested in my training. And that's the thing is we could both stand here and go, oh, well, we're slightly competitors. No, it's no. in this, it's what you learn is how you can become better to help other people. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's why we were talking about Chris's book. I learned it because I was in sales, but I recently did a talk to a, a school district to superintendents and they, I said, what's one of your biggest problems? And they said, having difficult discussions with students and with parents I said, okay. So I whipped out, never split the difference. And we talked about, you have to think from the other person's point of view. Yeah. You know, you have to identify the labels Yeah. and you know, how do you respond back to people to let them know you're doing active listening? Those are things that Chris taught us that helps teachers now with having difficult discussions with students and parents. So what I do now in my group calls, cause I try to do the same thing and you just run out of shit to talk about, oh, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, because at the end of the day, what I've also figured out is that we all talk, I mean, other than you really, just because your stuff is very niche and very unique, right? But like all of us talk about a lot of the same shit, mm -hmm. right? We just all package it a little bit differently and we're going to resonate with a different audience yes. that likes the way that I deliver it, right? Yes. There's other people that are like, oh my God, he said a naughty word, he's going to hell. <laughs> and like, right? And other ones are like, oh my God, you speak like me, I resonate with you, I, I can hear it when you say it, right? Yes. Type of thing, right? So what I do now, since I started my group coach, and some one-on-one -on -one coaching is I go take other people like Brad that I learned from mm -hmm. and I take his book and I make everybody read his book yes. together so that we can learn from it and then take pieces out of it and then I can facilitate the learning of the book. Right. That's the, and so like, I'm going to, I'm going to keep doing that. Right. And then maybe I can get Brad, like, I probably can't get Brad to do that, but like, you know, I can get some of those guys to come on and talk for 20 minutes to give their insight from the book that we just read or whatever it is. Right. You want to know how to, a cheat way to help, help with that. Hmm. When you have your students buy the book, have them, when you're done with it, leave a review that says, I'm so glad that he made me buy this book and then put that on the Amazon reviews. And then later on, somebody will see that. So people look at their Amazon reviews. Mm. And so if you have your students buy the books and when they're done, if they genuinely like the book, yeah. go leave a review and say the fact that Eric is the one who made me pick up this book and I'm so happy for it. Look at that. That made that made today fucking worth it. That's a great cheat code. <laughs> yeah. Is that something you did? I, it's something I want to do because one of the things I started doing it um, when we go to some of the events, like I go to Steve Sims events, the speakeasy. Yeah. And a lot of times the authors will give you their book for free. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, but then how do they benefit? And yes, you may use them. But so there was a girl named uh, Laurel Porty who just did a uh, Facebook ads book and she gave it to us all. And so when it came out on Audible, I went and bought the Audible one so I could leave a review. Mm. So I've done that personally, but I've never thought of it as a strategy until you, we were just talking. I'm like, well, why not do the best of both worlds? I was doing it to support the author because she gave me a copy of her book, mm -hmm. but you're making multiple people buy the book. Sure. So why not turn that into something you can use? Boy, that's fucking genius. Yeah, great job. <laughs> <laughs> Did that one on the fly. <laughs> I love that shit. That's fucking, I got to tell you, man, like, this is what I, 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 I miss having these, I miss having like these kind of conversations. I, I did a podcast, um, at RoofCon mm -hmm. and I had my set up there and then there's a gentleman there, uh, his name's Mike Claudio mm -hmm. and he's a coach kind of in our space, but does some other stuff as well. Stud, like super cool guy, but I, I'd never really gotten to like spend time with him and meet him. He'd been watching me from afar. I'd been watching him from afar. I keynoted the year before at RoofCon. He keynoted that year. So Hunter, who owns RoofCon, was like, you two need to hook up, right? right. And I'm usually the guy that's like, I'm good. I got enough friends. Like, don't try and fucking hook me up with somebody, right? Like, yeah. I'm, I'm fine. Well, I asked Mike, I'm like, hey, come on my show. I'd love to interview. He's like, well, I want you to come on my show. And I'm like, all right, fine. Like, we'll swap. No, no, you go first. Right. No, you go first. So we, I go on his first, and we're talking, and we got to this part where we were like, man, we pour into people so much all the time. I miss being able to just sit here with a peer and have these open conversations and this dialogue to like learn from each other of like how we can how we can utilize our different skill sets to be able to you know jump into these different avenues and help these people that we're that we're trying to help right yes. and and i was like funny you say that because a year and a half ago i had this idea i've been on you know we all go on retreats and all this kind of stuff right i've been on 
10 different retreats with Sam. Yeah. He's broke my fucking arm. Oh, you're the one in the race in the razor? Yep, that was I me. I heard the story at dinner last night. Yeah, oh, really? Yep, that was me. So he snapped my <laughs> fucking arm. Um, like, he almost killed me in Lake Powell. Yeah. Like, left me and, like, three other guys, like, in the middle of Lake Powell. The boat floated away. Oh. Like, just that's just what happens when you go places with yeah. Sam, right? So I've always been like, I really want to facilitate something like that. So I thought a year ago huh? that I wanted to facilitate it for the people that I was helping just like Sam does and just yeah. like, you know, whatever. And, and like Hunter does. And I was sitting with Mike and he was like, that's great. He goes, but what if we facilitated it for us? Oh, I like that. Right. And he's like, get some high level dudes. There's no agenda. Right. Right. And what do you want to do? And I'm like, well, here's what I started. I, I'm a big scuba diver. Uh-huh. And I'm like, I Patty want. Patty or Nowy? Huh? Patty or Nowy? SSA. SSI. SSI. I'm not familiar with that one. Oh, really? Yeah. Hey, yeah. I didn't know that. What's the third, second one you so, said? So uh, Patty's the you yeah. know, one. And then Nowy is N A U I. Oh, I haven't heard of that one. Yeah, that's oh, okay. One oh, okay. Oh, well, this <laughs> conversation going somewhere. But so I've been diving since like 2013. Mm-hmm. Um, it's like. If I quit doing what I'm doing, I will buy a fucking boat and just have a little dive shop down in Grand Cayman. Oh, and nice. like, that's what I would, that's how I would retire and die. Yeah. Like I've already said, like when I die, my ashes yep. will be put into a brick and then put at the ledge of where my favorite dive site is nice. in, in Grand Cayman. Okay. So I was like, I really want to facilitate this underwater. I don't want to call it a mastermind, but just like a coming together of like really good dudes. Right. Absolutely. So I was like, okay, I'm going to do it. And Mike was like, I'm in. He's like, I'll come. And I'm like, okay. So I did the whole build it and they will come thing, right? Yeah. I didn't even have any money to fucking do it. Like, I was like, I got all my money everywhere yeah. else. Yeah. I went and got a 11 bedroom mansion in Grand Cayman. Um, we've got private chef. And then my brother-in-law owns a dive shop down mm-hmm. there. And so we got a boat chartered for three days. We're going to go diving, do night dives, go dive on the east side, hopefully see some sharks, go do some cool oh, shit. Yeah. And just be there right not gonna have a whiteboard we're not gonna fucking you know do any exercises we'll try and facilitate conversations right to make sure that like we're all doing yeah, something side chat yep get yeah. vulnerable a little bit like just be men in a yeah. thing and i'm capping it at 12 to 13 people uh-huh. right so it stays intimate and it's not like all over the place um and i had nobody right when I did it. Yeah. And so we've gotten up to, I think we're at about eight, nine guys right now. Yeah. Um, and it's April 22nd to the 26th. Mm-hmm. I'm not making any money on it. I'm charging guys five grand. Yeah. Five grand to come for four days, five days, right. Monday through Friday, all the divings included, houses included, foods included, all that. Um, I just want to, I want to be somebody that can put those people together right and so like that i have no idea where that came from or where i was going with that but like i'm i'm so passionate about that as well and like it and and that's the way that if if that's the way that i can get around more of those people yeah right by facilitating that then that's then that's what i want to do yeah you're talking about getting to sit down and do peer-to-peer conversations yes and that's what i miss yes Yes, thank you yeah that's what i miss right and if i can have four days Mm -hmm of that and I can facilitate it for other people so that they can walk away and be like, Oh my God, like we got to do all this cool shit and just be and call it a mastermind. So you can write it off on tax. Yeah, exactly. I put it in the name. It's called the underwater mastermind. There you go. Then you can write it off. Right. Don't have to be part of the group. Nope. Right. You can just, this is what I want. Like I want to put this together. So yeah. So anyway, that's there. So if you're like (laughs) open April 22nd to the 26th, you're invited. I might have that. Let me think. I know I'm speaking in April. I'm speaking April 4th and 5th. I've got a few others. I'll, but we'll look. We should we'll talk, look. though. Yeah, I mean, I, just the fact that you yeah. actually dive, right? Because I'm making everybody that doesn't dive, yes. they have to go get their book work and their pool work done. Right. And then my brother-in-law will cert yes, them the, while they're there. I'm going to have to go get some gear and do it again. I haven't dove in almost five years. Yeah. Uh, we went. But to, you know how. Oh, I know how. Yeah. yeah. The scary thing was, uh, this was before we knew the, the, dreaded, the dreaded C word, but I think I had it. Matter of fact, I think when I went to the doctor, because I came home, they're like, you have a virus. But I came home and I couldn't take deep breaths and they rushed me to the emergency room because they said, well, what'd you do in Mexico? And I said, well, I hung out in Mexico and then I went scuba diving. And they said, you probably have a pulmonary embolism. And that was the scariest thing. So oh I had God. never been to the hospital. Yeah. Or like I've never been to ER. That was the first time I ever had, ever had to go to ER and get an x-ray to make sure that I didn't have uh, air in my lungs. Yeah. You know, from it. And so I haven't dove since then. I'm not against but it. But you didn't. Was, no, I didn't. I was completely okay. fine. Yeah. But it, that was a 
scary thing because I love scuba diving. It's I call it mobile meditation because you're down there, all you can hear is your breath. Yes. And you get to see some amazing yes. things. And you'll appreciate this since you're a diver. Is I was still relatively new. And one time a guy comes up and he goes. <laughs> and I go, okay, I know this is big. I know this is a shark. What is that? He's like, big shark, we're fucked. <laughs> I'm glad I didn't know that until we got to the surface. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah. To, to, to your point of it being, you know, the meditation and the breathing, it's interesting because I meet other people that have tried diving. Uh-huh. And they're like, I can't do it. I like, I get anxious and like, you know, whatever. And I'm like, it's so interesting because when I dive, Mm -hmm. my heart rate goes down. Yes. Right. I just sit there and I am and I breathe and I see how far up I go when I breathe and how far down I go when I breathe. And like, that's, that's me, man. You just beat me to it. I was going to say, it's not just the breathing. It's understanding how your breathing affects your buoyancy. Yeah. And the fact of, oh, why need to go up? Yeah. Nope, need to go down. Yeah. And so if you look at, and you really think about meditation and yoga and how important breathing is, that shows you the best example of your breath controls where you go in life. Yeah. It controls so much. And it's just, it, and, and when it becomes so impactful and you're, you're alone. Yes. Right? It's just you. Like, yeah, there's people around you, but like, it's just you. The biggest thing that I love is, and it takes me, uh, it takes me one dive before it stops. But when I jump in on the first dive of a trip, uh-huh. I fucking pat my pocket looking for my phone. Oh, <laughs> okay. Makes sense. Yep. And then yeah. finally, by the second, third dive, I don't do it. But like, yeah. I have that little panicky moment, like, oh my God, is my phone in my... Yeah. Right. Or, or I'm looking for it like, oh, something cool. Mm-hmm. I need to whatever. Right. Yeah. And what changes I go, if I go dive for three to five, six, seven days, whatever. Um, I mean, we used to take trips down there when my daughter was young, we'd go down for a month and a half wow. and just be there. Cause, and we had family, so it was nice, you know, right. that was there, but like we'd go down for a month and a half and I would just dive almost every day. Yeah. And, and I just, I became such a different person because it's like, I was like forcefully meditating yes. and not thinking about it. I was just doing it and I was so much calmer and I was just all those things that you get from that. You know, the more you can control your breathing, the longer you get to stay under. Yep. There's so many yes. life lessons. Now, what I do love is, you know, when you go through and you're passing tests, it's like, if you have an, a stuffed up nose, don't go. And when you go on a dive trip, they're like, okay, here's the- Getting Afrin, Sudafed, yeah. <laughs> everything so you can still die. Yes. <laughs> so, I mean, I remember going on one trip and I'm like, okay, what's the last time I could dive and still get on a plane? Yeah. And, like you start doing the math, you yes. know, and it's the funny thing is you pass, when you take the test, it's a lot of, well, here's your math calculations and everything. When you go, you just dive. Yeah. You, I got a computer. <laughs> what the fuck do I need? To- <laughs> it's like, how do you learn calculus? Because I'm going to use it every day. I don't no, you're fucking all. not. No, you're but not. I agree with you. So there's things about it. And, and then I- you try to go by the computer that has the more aggressive algorithm too. Yes. Have you done that yet? No, no. Oh, I have. Because I had, I bought a watch, I bought a computer and I went and dove and I was, I went down and all I was doing was diving. So I was diving like four or five times a day. Yeah. And I came up and I looked at my friends and I was like, look, if I wanted a second fucking wife, I'm not going to put her on my goddamn wrist. Like, this is outrageous. Like, I don't need this thing telling me that I got to fucking come up. Yeah. I'm like, what do I do? And they're like, oh, just get a different watch with a better al- algorithm. <laughs> and so I literally started That's finding that. Awesome. Yeah. I, I do something similar, but in a different vein on my uh, GPS. So when I use Waze and everything, it's a British sounding lady. Because if she's going to tell me what to do, I want it to sound sexy. Oh, I've done the same thing. One other scuba trick that you can do, though, is if you are getting fucked on yeah. your on your watch, yeah. is um, wherever the drop line is, yeah. just go tie it <laughs> to the drop line because it's at like 15 feet anyway, yes. yeah. and then just leave it on the boat, and then it won't. This is not medical <laughs> advice. We are not certified <laughs> scuba instructors. But I have 100% done that. <laughs> Well, that's the funny thing. I'm, man, I used to be in this uh, charity organization called Dallas Margarita Society. And it was okay. started by a bunch of older guys. When I say they're older, they were younger at the time. But they're like, well, how do we meet women? So they were going to call themselves either the Harvey Wallbangers. But then they're like, women like margaritas. And so they came up with the Dallas Margarita Society. And the funds they collected, they gave to Dallas Children's Charities, which was their charitable organization. But they were some serious hardcore divers. And so like when nitrous, uh, Nitrox first came out, yeah. This one guy grabbed like three tanks of it to just see how far down he could go. And I mean, they would dive all the time. As a matter of fact, one how of guys, long you could go. Yeah. How long? You could okay. Go. I gotta say you don't go deep on nitrox. Right. And, yeah. Um, then one of the guys, he actually, uh, was it right before COVID 
really good guy named Kyle. He was one of the directors. He was actually the president when I joined the organization. Him and his wife moved to Attila or somewhere, and they, oh, yeah. they opened up a dive shop. And I think when you find people who dive, they just seem to enjoy life yes. and in a way that other people don't. Like, you, you kind of, when you take up scuba diving, you become somewhat Jimmy Buffett by default. Of uh, You just start looking forward to how can I get back in the water? What can I see? Yes. And it's some of the things that you look at. We, everything in life on land is so fast. You mm -hmm. know, I'm moving, I'm speeding, I'm going 80 miles an hour. Mm -hmm. And now you're just looking and exploring while you're down there. And again, just you. Yep. And just. You kind of become an underwater hippie. Yes. Right? Like a tree hugger, but underwater. Right? Because you're yeah. like, I'm one with nature. And it's like, ah, stop being a pussy. You know? Because <laughs> exactly. like, I'm, I'm that man's man and yeah. you know, whatever. But like, I get Look underneath the there. Fish. <laughs> yeah. But like, I, I literally like, I am, I'm the least religious guy in the world. Yeah. But as a, like, but as a recovering addict, like I'm very spiritual and I do believe Same. in God and you know, yeah. and that kind of stuff. Just not all the books and bullshit that go with it. Yeah. But when I am underwater. That is when I, that is when I find my universe and my spirituality and like my God and all of that kind of stuff. I don't know why that is, but for me, that's where it is. It's for me, I'm, I'm extremely visual. It's the, you look at the, all the life that's down there mm -hmm. and you go, what else do we not know? Like I, I only went down 30 feet and look what I discovered that I've never seen on land. Right. And it's these bright colors. And then it's the psychology behind it. A school of fish swim together to keep larger predators from eating them as individuals. Right. I mean, there's so many life lessons yes. in, in going below the water. Yeah. Like we talked about, okay, check your gear, get certified, get a coach. Then once you get coached, you can do things on your own, but then you learn to be your own coach. What's my air at? What's my backup plan? Who's right. my buddy that if I need to be a backup breather? Yeah. There are so many life lessons in just going to get scuba certified yeah. that you can apply to your entire life. Yeah. You ever taken a dive rescue course? No, I have not. Oh, fuck. Do that. You really learn a lot mm -hmm. when you do that. I, I, I did it because I wanted to get a certain certification or something because I think I got to like master diver or something like that. Yeah. And I remember uh, the, the final test of that cert is you have to like drag the drag body, body out or whatever yeah. but they when you're underwater they'll do some shit right yeah and so they'll spit their reg out and start convulsing and so you have to grab them underneath grab their reg stick it in their mouth pull them up like wow. inflate pull them yeah. up to the top and then swim and drag them onto the beach right yeah. so i'm doing this in a fucking rock quarry in the middle of iowa where i'm getting this cert and the guy that i'm with is a big dude like yeah. he's not a thin fella yeah and what he did to screw with me I couldn't see, right? The viz was like literally like that far, right? Yep. He stuck his foot underneath a rock <laughs> and then he started doing his shit and yeah. spit his reg out. I throw his reg back in and, I'm, and I start inflating so that I can get him up, right? Because yeah. I can't just swim, right? I right. need to get some air. And all of a sudden it goes, cook, cook. But I'm still going yeah. up. He's not moving. And so like, but you have to problem solve, right? And it's yeah. like, okay, deflate, like go down, find what's going on, get his foot out from, right? Yeah. And like, you're watching every angle and like what's going on. It's like, and to your point, like you can just learn so much from that, that, that goes into life. It's yeah. amazing. Clear your goggles, you know, hey, yeah. who's your breathing buddy? How do you do the arm swoop? There's a lot yeah. that you can really learn from it. Uh, the thing that I sucked at the worst was going down to the bottom and doing the slow, steady air to get your way back up. Oh like, yeah. yeah. I would always go up too fast. Too I got fast. in trouble for that. Yeah. Um, it's funny. We were talking about getting your certification and in, in the quarry or we, we went to, it was supposed to be really visible, but I couldn't see any farther than you and I are apart. Oh, and, uh, on top of that, they, whatever was in the water or whatever they used to clean the, uh, uh, wetsuit. I had an allergic reaction to. So stop everywhere that they, the wetsuit went is where I was covered in hives. <laughs> so you can imagine from here oh, all my the God. way down. So I thought maybe this isn't for me, but then I ended up doing it and I love it. But um, wetsuits were just, it's one of those things that then I was a little bit paranoid about them, but it was just that well, one Well, here's time. the good thing. Grand came in in April, you don't need a wetsuit. I'm, and I'm Water's 82, 83, 84, like you're solid. Yes. Don't have to worry about it. That's all. Awesome. We don't even allow it. So, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Brian, dude, you? I am so fucking glad that you came here. I'm yes. so glad we got to sit down and get to know each other a little bit. I'm really going to be disappointed now if I don't get you to come on this trip because oh, yeah. like that would be fantastic um, just for all of us, right? Like yeah. it'd just be so much fun. Um, but thank you for taking the time out of your day because like there's nothing that i value more than time oh i agree and so when somebody gives me theirs 
it's more appreciated than maybe they know. Um, and I think that people should uh, recognize people giving them time a little bit more because it's a really big deal. It is. And that's why I felt so bad yesterday that of having to reschedule. And I appreciate you adjusting because I wanted to see Chris. Yeah, like, that was the me too. <laughs> so, <laughs> that was the thing. Where I was like, crap, it's going to conflict at the same time. So yeah. I appreciate it. And I'd love to come back. We're at the same event again, yeah. which what people don't know is we ran into each other backstage at an event in Vegas right. and realized we were across from each other here last year. Right. <laughs> so whenever we're at the same point, and what city do you live in again? Uh, I live in Houston now, but I'm moving back to Nebraska next month. Okay, well, I'm Dallas. So okay. we'll make another trip. We'll Absolutely. do another podcast. Yes. We'll have to make it happen. Yes. Brian, thank you so much for being here. Um, everybody, thank you for watching and listening. Make sure that you check out his stuff. Give me uh, info, website, sure. all that shit. So Brian Galke, G-A-L-K-E. Um, the website is Subtle Skills, and everything is is subtle skills now for some reason people can't figure out how to spell subtle so you can go to <laughs> maybe those people just aren't your fucking client okay <laughs> I agree. you can go to get the cheat sheet.com okay That's easy enough to remember okay awesome check out his stuff it's honestly amazing like just the little stuff that he did while he was sitting here is obviously just fun but imagine the stuff that you can learn um, and be able to implement into your life to to make yourself better at whatever it is that you do right it doesn't even matter what you do but those kind of skills can be used in anything so everybody uh Remember, uh, don't have fucking sponsors. So Zen for all your nicotine needs. Um, cinnamon is my favorite, but citrus is pretty good too. So uh, pick up some Zen. Uh, it's, it's good for you. Um, I'm really hoping they pick me up as a sponsor. Uh, guys, thank you. Share this. Like, subscribe. There's no way that you didn't fucking learn something today. So make sure that other people have the opportunity to learn something from this as well. And remember, everybody, to be authentic. Or get the fuck out. Get the fuck out if you can't be authentic. Get the fuck out if you can't be authentic. Get the fuck out if you can't be authentic. Yeah.